It's that pre-show <laughs> gold you don't want to miss out on. Exactly. Um, exactly. It's where the magic happens. <laughs> Who knows? Right, Dash yeah. could have put a wig on and we would have never caught it. <laughs> that was a good joke, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right then, guys, should we kick off? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Well, hello. And welcome to episode number five of the Game of Hive podcast. I'm joined by the usual suspects. We have Phantom. Yo, 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 yo. Shady. Yo, yo, yo. And lucky enough to have It's That Guy Josh join us for the second time. Hello, thank you for having me again. <laughs> no, we appreciate you stepping in to fill the very tiny shoes of Squat and Neville. Oh, <laughs> so, so you've got uh, you haven't got a lot to do to uh, to beat his um, contribution. So don't worry about that. He's not listening anyway. He's sit, not listening to podcasts, Neville. Sit back, relax, and um, nod your yeah. head. Sometimes that's all fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're, we're, we're five. Brilliant. We're five episodes in. I can't believe it. Awesome, huh? It seems crazy. And again, there was a recent poll, and we were voted the world's best podcast. Again, yeah, I did read about nice. that. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's good. We might. I might put that in on in the next blog that we do actually. But no, it's <laughs> um, it's all been good. The sun's shining here up in the uh, northeast of the UK. It's shining down in the south as well. Brilliant. <coughs> Can confirm shining in the south. Yep. <laughs> oh, like, no. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's raining as Hol- fuck. Ho- Holland has a sim- similar weather to the UK, really, doesn't it? It's quite... Um, grey? The climate's quite sim- similar. Grey. Yeah. Grey, rainy. It's generally... Yeah, that's generally the, what, what we have, where it is in the northeast anyway. That's what we have. Yeah. I'm actually so, pretty upset because next month I'm looking at going to France for the weekend. Nice. And we're just driving basically wherever we want. We're going to go into Belgium. And I was thinking about coming over, Shady, to, to your area. But you're, from speaking to Renzo, you live far up north, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I live very we're close to We're going to be region. down the south. <laughs> it's just a, a drive, I guess, two, two and a half hours. Yeah. That isn't that far. So how fun. long? How long does it take to drive from the top of Holland to the bottom? Uh, it depends on on traffic, but let, let me say three hours. That's not mm. bad, is it? No, because I like think that, to get to Aberdeen from where I live, it's four and a half hours. To get to Brighton from where I live, it's four and a half hours. <laughs> a coach um, for me to get from where I am, south of England, to Scotland is thirteen hours. Oh shit. Yeah, uh, that's eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, I, I did that last year. It was horrible. <laughs> Not going to do it again, no. No. <laughs> I, went, I went to Scotland for a week and being on a thirteen-hour trip. And on the way there, they were running late, so they skipped the, the brake stop. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> Can imagine. So we've got a little bit of talk about. Um, there's some game news that we from some of our supported games that we want to talk about. Um, so where do we want to start? Community updates. See what's been happening in our community. Um, in the Discord, we've we're still sort of trying to grow our PC community, um, and we're trying to recruit in some Xbox players. We've had some join today actually, which is good. But um, we would. We, we would like to say a little bit more in terms of activity from certainly from the Xbox side because uh, I know we have people who are in the community that play Xbox already for sure um, as well as PS4 so it would be nice to get some some more support in there and um, see what we can do when supporting some new games because I guess we've got a little bit of space haven't we to fill if we can yeah. Look at what games we've got and see if we can repurpose any channels for new games or anything <coughs> like that. So it'd be nice to say some of that. Yeah. So maybe we could do a little bit of recruitment. Uh, Phantom, we could work on on some more PC specific recruitment. I know yeah, we talked sounds- a little bit about the dedicated service, which we'll talk a bit bit more about later on. Sounds good. 
Yep, and um, Josh kindly volunteered to do some writing for us, so maybe we can tie something like that in to uh, get some more PC and Xbox related <clears throat> content. Let's let's not forget let's not forget to the watchers or listeners of this podcast. Uh, if you're not um, a member yet, please visit thegamerhive.com and join our servers. Yeah. Yeah. Ça va. Ça va, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Just one now. No, we are we are one big happy family. Yeah. For sure. Indeed. Um and of course if you guys have any ideas of how we can make the community better, we obviously want to know those. Fire away. Yeah. Get them sent in, either DM via the website by the feedback channel that we have going, certainly send them on in. We are receptive to, to members suggesting things. And I think one of the things that was suggested by Angry Scotsman was to put some timestamps in the um, show notes. So people, ah. if they want to go to a specific section, they can go to a specific section. So maybe we could, that's something that we could do with regards to some of the things we're talking about. Sounds good. Uh, I did it for the first good episode idea. and then I ran out of time to try and do it for the other episode, so... Yeah. Well, that's a poor show. That's a poor show and a lack of commitment. <laughs> to how dare you. We'll do that, though. No problem. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, we'll start with the most important topic first, I think, and that's Destiny, of course. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's not much to talk about, to be honest. There's a, uh, there's a little bit, actually. Um, they um, the activity in our server went up quite significantly in the last week because they re- released, as they often do, uh, Bungie, a hidden quest that was just dropped from nowhere. There was no pre-warning of it. There was nothing, and it just appeared out of nowhere. And they've done this a couple of times um, in this game, and they also did it in Destiny 1 um, with a very challenging uh, quest for a generally excellent weapon and that's been that's all that people have been playing this week it's called zero hour and it's a timed mission 20 minutes to, to get your way through which is a an element of um killing hmm. enemies um doing some platforming and solving puzzles and beating a boss so it's like a mini raid encounter essentially um and that's what's been people have been sort of putting their time into this week so it's nice to see Bungie coming out with um, some some of these types of encounters and these updates um, and um, do more of them, please, definitely. We've got no Destiny players on the podcast, have we, except me? Yeah, Not I don't no play, unfortunately. <laughs> Not anymore, no. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, that's to me. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's um, it's definitely um, a big plus point in the in the Destiny community, and it's always very well received when they when they come up with something like this. Um, the mission itself is it's very enjoyable. Um, I think myself and uh, the White Ball Pain and um, Twisted Soul. Get used to these new uh, PSN names soon. <laughs> Twisted Soul it was formerly Kamikaze Cannibal have all um, been sort of trying to do this. I think a couple of us have done it, and um, we're going to try again. For the guys that haven't managed to get the weapon, we're going to try again this this weekend as well. But um, Let us know if you've got it. Uh, well, I have, of course. I've got it. I've got it on the second night, I think it was. Awesome. But uh, hopefully we're going to run Kamikaze, uh, sorry, Twisted Soul. We're going to run him <laughs> through it. <laughs> Uh, tonight hopefully and then uh, we tackle the hard mode version of that uh, same thing but um, there's a new expansion which launches on the 4th of June which is the last expansion released under the Activision umbrella so that how make is it, gonna uh, how, how does it feel Bash? um I've got mixed feelings, to be honest, because Activision, were, they sort of put the pressure on Bungie to release content. Right. 
so for for for, for people who enjoy playing the game that want to swallow up and eat that content as quickly as possible that's good because we're getting stuff often yeah um we i just it's impossible to know what's going to happen after this um this um this last expansion right it's um the uh, studio that the have designed it isn't bungie bungie were involved but it's a studio called vicarious visions who did the one of the earlier expansions which was heavy on puzzles and um mysteries and things like that so I, I, it'll be a good expansion but we're not going to really know what the future for destiny is until we see bungie's next roadmap of the year to come and see what they're going to put out then i guess that's that's the thing how long's destiny 2 been out now we are in year two coming up to, to year three so steady stream in of content in September, I think. Yeah, because in yeah year one was the um, they did a, a, a standard um, DLC release. So you bought the game, and there was expansion pass one and expansion pass two, mm-hmm. and that was two content drops that had missions and strikes and crucible maps and raids and stuff like that. <clears throat> for what they did for year two was release what they call an annual pass. And they were going to do more, uh, more frequent content, but they were moving away from traditional campaign type expansions. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, it, pre- historically, with Destiny, you always got a, a little bit added on as a story of Destiny in terms of a, a campaign mode, which might only be sort of four or five missions, and then you would have associated content like a strike or a crucible map. Um, to go along with that. But um, what they did in year two was just release um, like game modes, really. There wasn't any story. The story was all in, I guess, in the lore behind the weapons and the armor pieces that you collected. But essentially, they introduced new game modes, uh, whether it was like a horde mode or a new crucible mode or um, like a game mode like Gambit. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what they've done. So it hasn't been that well received. Do you know what I mean? Because people who were looking to do get to get sort of down with the the detail in the story were missing out. You know. Yeah. So I, who knows? <clears throat> Nobody knows what they're going to do for the next the next year. We'll just have to wait mm-hmm. till I'm guessing till September. Historically, September has been Bungie's month for releasing new games or new content. They would nearly always have a big release ready to go in September. Hmm. Exciting. I think it's okay. a problem. Yeah. Sorry, go on. No. Uh, the, the only question I have is um, this is now from Bungie itself now, isn't it? Because they obviously recently split from... Uh, from yeah. yeah. Um, We've got so one more. How was oh, it? One more of them both together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What, which is out in June. Okay. Cool. Anything after that is going to be bungee. Just bungee. Yeah. <coughs> so it's something we see now, though. You know, this more common trend of games as a service. Mm. I just think it's impossible to please everyone nowadays. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 it sure. is. it's difficult. Uh, um, I would. I prefer. Bungie to release a game and then to have planned DLC that you'd have to buy because then you know you're going to get you, you know exactly what you're going to get mm-hmm. just for them to come out with an annual pass that might include one weapon quest or it just isn't enough it for me yeah, did, is this are they following the same model as they did with Destiny 1 or is it was Destiny 1 a more planned DLC yeah, Destiny One was purely the game, and then you had um, three or four DLCs. Two, three, four, probably what five. Was, I what think. was the take? Was it the Taken King? Was the one Taken I remember King. that one. Yeah, that was a big DLC where they redesigned the uh, a lot of the in-game mechanics and, and put a lot more um, RPG elements into it. Um, Forsaken is Destiny 2's Taken King, if you like, 
where they listened to a lot of the community feedback and put all those changes in and came out with a fantastic expansion. Probably one of the best expansions that, that I've played. Um, so I don't think we'll get anything as big as that in September of this year. If anything, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And, Who knows? Did you um, reach all levels and uh, is there something left to do for you? Except for Crucibles or um, the, the, the multiplayer? No, there's always something to go for in Destiny because they have um, they have aspects of the game which appeal to whether you are a collector mm -hmm. or a completionist. So the collectors like to collect every piece of arm, every weapon, every go shell, every ship, every... Yeah, exactly. Spark, you know, um, completionists like to do all of the different challenges that are related to the various game modes. Mm -hmm. So they are looking to complete all of the Crucible-related uh, challenges and or all of the raid-related challenges and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's always something always to something go to do. for. Cool. In terms of content, um, I think I've done every piece of content and completed every, yeah, yeah, I've done all, I've done all the raids. Um, there's some of them that I haven't done at prestige difficulty, um, but I'm not really that bothered, to be honest. How, how many? I enjoy, um, how many? How many? How many raids? No, how many hours you got in? Oh, blimey. <laughs> um, let me find out quickly. Just, Talk amongst yourselves for a quick second. Yeah, for sure. Did you ever play the uh, uh, Destiny uh, Phantom? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played the first one. Um, done quite a lot on the first one. Uh, then when the second one came out, I don't know why, but I decided to buy it. Um, even though I knew, because I, I liked the first one, but I didn't like how repetitive it was. Mm -hmm. Once you've completed basically the storyline it's just very repetitive for me and the second one i knew it was going to be the same i decided to buy it anyway and then just never really touched it again because it was the same repetitiveness as the first one yeah and it didn't feel like it was a one and two it felt like it was just an expansion pack that you were paying a ridiculous amount of money for um that was my opinion on it anyway but right yeah yeah <laughs> 1000 1419 hours Jesus Christ. That's some that's, hours. And that's just on Destiny 2. Jeez, I, I couldn't bring I couldn't bring up the um Did you want? I couldn't bring up the um the Destiny 1 times. Um, that's a lot of hours. But, yeah. Poof. I have two two PSN IDs on Destiny 1, so Destiny 1 time is easily more than that. But we've got a guy who's in the Destiny clan who I think has clocked up because I'm only rank nine at, at fourteen at fourteen hundred hours. So well, if, just, is that just one guardian, or have you done more than one? No, that I've got three characters. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Fourteen hundred nine, uh, fourteen, but only rank nine. So there's eight more guardians who have put in more time than what I have. Mm. So that, that's so much. Like my top three most played games are CS:GO, Ark, and GTA V, all with over two hundred hours in. And for you to say that you've done a, a thousand hours in Destiny, that's crazy. And do you know what? I only game from eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> 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 Practically, Mister No Sleep but, or. Uh, um... Yeah, uh, yeah, five hours, four or five hours. Yeah. But um, there's a guy, Springer, and I've looked at his details before. He's got about 3,000 hours in, and that's just on Destiny wow. 2. He had 4,000 hours logged. I'm pretty sure it was 4,000 hours on Destiny 1. That's insane, man. But I've seen him online at, at any time throughout the day. I've seen, I've seen him online. <laughs> It must be, yeah. I don't know if he's got an elastic band wrapped around his controller or something like that, and he's just, he's AFK and he's just logging the time or what, but <laughs> there's some crazy, crazy hours being put in. <clears throat> awesome. But anyway, what about Apex, guys? What's going on there? I know it's, um, Sorry, everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody compares. I was listening to somebody talk about Apex today, 
and comparing it to Fortnite. And it's a little bit of an unfair comparison, I think, isn't it? Um, I mean, kind I think of. A- a- Apex um, it burst onto the scene. It had an unreal launch. And I think we all should have known. Um, That's not going to last. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take for Fortnite to get where it is? And, and Let's other- start off with problem number one, EA. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Problem number one, EA. Um, but like you said, they, they started off really big, which was which was good. They, they were a huge or bigger than Fortnite for what, a month? But the issue was is they brought no new updates quick enough. They brought um no like saying what kind of updates are gonna be announced. Then they brought out the battle pass, um which from my understanding, they were very short, um, like seasons, mm-hmm. compared to what most games do. Their battle passes, um, yeah. Therefore, obviously, more money was being involved, which is no surprise with EA. Um, and then it was you have to pay for the separate characters as well in the yeah. game. Um, I think it was just too much money driven and not enough <laughs> updates coming. Yeah, EA money driven. Yeah. No, surely not. <laughs> Did um, was it was it possible to earn enough credit in game to buy the characters, or did you have to use cash money? You you could. There was two types of currency. There was currency that you had to pay real money for, and then there was mm-hmm. another type of currency. But the thing is, that type of currency was, from what I saw of it when I played, was took for long a very long time to build up. Because mm-hmm. um, like, yeah. imagine something is like. Uh, 2,000 coins, but you only get like two coins on a 10% chance out of a loot box. Right. Oh, so, so you'd have to play the game for like yeah four centuries before you would earn enough to be able to buy one. Or be pretty good. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I think um, they need time, don't they? I don't know how for- how long it took Fortnite to to get to the position that it's in in terms of gearing up to be able to to come up with the um, the game modes, it's, it's um, not just like I think for Fortnite it was a story mode as well. Like with every season, there's a storyline to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't always make sense, but it keeps you kind of entertained. You want to log on mm. to play the game just to see what the new update is. Hey, I, I enjoyed the um, the most recent mode, the end game mode. I thought was good. Yeah, yeah. I played a few games of that with my daughters and uh, I'm my glad daughters. You actually, my, um, my daughter was getting like 16, 17 kills per game. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, obviously, yeah, like you said, it's basically that game mode was one way you could like respawn so you could get loads of those. Yeah. Um, you had so many a, respawns per team, didn't you, or something? Yeah. Um, worked, yeah. So that was a partnership with Marvel, which obviously is huge and must have been in the works for a long time. They had um, special skins that are going to be rare now, never be mm-hmm. able to get again. Um, and obviously, that that must be a good money grab for Fortnite to do that link with them. Mm. Um, they if just you... brought out uh, a new update this week, and they're doing the new John Wick film. Mm. So now they've yeah. done a, 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 a merge, a, what do you call it, a, a collaboration with John Wick. So right, have awesome. a film that they're getting good cash from, but at the same time getting a lot of viewers and players to come in and tune in, which is fantastic. Oh, clever. They've got a good, they've got a good marketing team. Yep. Yes. Sorting out these partnerships, mate. Never know. That's that's yes, pretty good. Have. I think the main difference for me is oh, I don't play battle royales because I'm no good at them, <laughs> so that's why I don't play them. Um, but the, the main difference has just been with Fortnite, whether it's been a good update or a bad update, it's yeah. just that consistent, constant developer support and communication with the fan base. Mm-hmm. Yes. Some patches really hit, some patches miss. Yeah. But they're so They happen so often that, you know, it never takes long to... To make it's, it better. It's funny you, it's funny you say that because the starting off the new season, ending the last season, starting off the new season, they've done this big event uh, at the end of the end game where they're in the lake there was this hole that was being undug. By the end of the season, everyone could jump into this hole and inside this hole was six weapons and they were saying, um, you have to break the weapon that you want to return to the game 
um, right. everyone chose one weapon. And that was kind of hmm. what I saw was a good interaction with the community because they're letting the community choose yeah. that weapon to come back into the game. And they brought that weapon back into the game for this season. Um, do you know the, um, the skins that you earn and, and things like once you've yeah. earned them, do you keep them? Yes. Regardless of whether that mode went away or, or something like that, so they would be available for you to put on your character. It's got nothing to do with the modes. Um, yeah. I mean, apart from apart from the the game mode at the moment with John Wick and the end game mode, where it forces you to look like a certain skin, mm-hmm. um, you don't get those. Right. Um, but all the other skins, once you get in the battle pass and stuff like that, they're they're yours a hundred. <laughs> And they keep making changes to them as well. Yeah. There, there was one thing I did um, hear about, which is slightly on the negative side, was the pressure being put on the um, developers in Fortnite. Wasn't there some extreme pressure for them to keep producing content? I mean, they're always going to have pressure because obviously they're the biggest game in the world at the moment. Yeah. Um, but this was, this but, was re- real. I mean, pressure. in the last. In the last season, they they did make quite a few uh, mistakes, whether it's changes to weapons or pulling out certain weapons or just certain things in their updates where a lot of people were going, this game's crap. And there was a right. lot of streamers, a lot of YouTubers that were going, this is the worst update, the worst season ever. Um, so that could be the pressure you're talking of as well. That they basically yeah, this was this was stuff that was actually affecting. I don't know if there was a whistleblower or something like that who was talking about some of the studio pressure that was being put down on their actual quarters and the people working on the game. That was yeah. Aff- yeah. that was affecting <laughs> their um, their personal lives, you know, to a certain extent. Mm. Right. I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised. As I said, they've got a lot to live up to at the moment, so. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just surprised that, you know, I, I was always convinced when Fortnite was on the rise that the second one of these AAA developers decides that they're going to do it, that I just thought that's it, that the game's going to be over. Mm. But uh, they just seem too afraid to try and learn from Fortnite as to mm. why that's been successful. They seem too proud to try and. If, for want of a better word, copy what, what Fortnite's done and change it from there. They just seem to be... Well, this is where I thought Apex was going to do good in, because they brought the um, the idea of the revival van in. Yeah. Um, of rebooting players back in that have been eliminated, which was a brilliant idea for Apex. Um, but because they didn't bring anything new that could beat Fortnite, they just let that stay there. Fortnite have now brought in a revival van, and it's doing... It's, People love it. It's doing wonders. So I think yeah. that's what, what what you're saying is like, obviously other games need to copy Fortnite, but then put their twist on it to go, this is slightly different and really cool. Yeah, there is absolutely no shame in using Fortnite as a platform to build an even better Battle Royale. Exactly. But they just seem to be afraid to do that for whatever reason. Like you said, Fortnite's the biggest game in the world right now. Why wouldn't you at least try and copy from their playbook and go from there? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, we, we, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that Apex, given the time um, and the investment, can get themselves into the same position where they can turn out the content um, and follow a similar model, you know, Hopefully. I mean, I personally, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not too bothered about Apex. Like, I'm happy for that to leave and just never come back. Um, <laughs> but what I would love to see is either PUBG or Call of Duty um, improve on theirs, on their Battle Royales. Yeah. Um, because they've got the more realistic feel those two games. Um, and if they were to make it more realistic but have these same kind of twists and changes to make it so much better, I reckon they would do really well and they would start rising. Mm. Um, How many Battle Royales currently are cross-play? Is it just Fortnite? Just, yeah, just Fortnite. Yeah. Just Fortnite. But hopefully, within the the release of the new consoles, Mm. we might see more. Yeah, I think we all keep our fingers crossed. You know, I would certainly, it it would be better for all gaming communities. 
speaking from the Destiny point of view, if we had a, a cross play or a cross save mm-hmm. yeah. option, even you know that would be the that would be an acceptable compromise. But cross play would certainly be better in terms of trying to build teams and get uh, activities going. <coughs> if you if you can sort of double up or triple up on your available player base. Yeah, especially or, with rates and stuff. It's, that's, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's yeah. such a yeah. helpful yeah, yeah. difficulty. Speaking of raids, thank you for that, Shady. Um, <laughs> there's a raid just launched tonight, and we have um, our very old Gamer Hive raid team that are trying to tackle it. Ooh. And try to... Um, it'll be interesting to see who gets world first on this. Can we um, <laughs> have a bit of context of what kind Probably of us. Certainly we can. We have our um, a, a resident division expert on the podcast actually there, Mr. It's That Guy, Josh, who's regular <laughs> in that channel, so who might be able to give us a little bit. One question what? before you, you say what it is. Um, I want to play Division, but I haven't got it yet, so I haven't actually seen a lot about it. Is this the first raid ever on Division? or? Yes. Yeah, basically, okay. yeah. The Division 1 had activities called incursions, which were uh, mechanic-based um, bullet sponges and, and things like that, which people compared to a raid, but they weren't a raid in the way you would experience a raid like a Destiny. Yeah. Now, um, the developers have actually come out and said, do, do not compare this raid with a D1 incursion. Okay. Right, that's it's awesome. Not. And just from what I've watched so far, they're just worlds of worlds apart. Cool. Yeah. Um, there, there is an achievement or a trophy that you can lock by doing the first, the one, one encounter, the first encounter in under an hour. So it sounds like it's got a heavy time commitment mm. in this rate, which is brilliant for, for hardcore gamers. It's definitely, it's not too good for people like me who might only get two hours <laughs> a night or three hours a night to do, but it's certainly, it's brilliant for the game. And it's um, an eight man raid. And Josh, you can certainly give us a little bit more detail, hopefully on, um, it would give us a division update actually because there's been a few changes and a few patches that have dropped as well as well as a raid that's uh, launched tonight yeah so there's been a lot of kind of they've had the public test server up for three or four weeks in different iterations kind of different talent buffs and nerfs and weapon buffs and nerfs um, just so people could get a feel for those I think just the, the subreddit for Division is a bit of a tyre fire at the moment, so everyone's up in arms, but I don't think everyone really agrees what they're up in arms about, which is the weirdest thing. <laughs> um, so the patch went live the other day. Largely, the game felt the same. Some builds feel a bit stronger, some build, builds feel a bit weaker, um, but it's fundamentally the same game it was a couple of days before the patch hit. But the biggest update is obviously the raid, and it'll be the first time a raid's appeared in uh, the division, including one and two, so I guess it's eight players, and I think they, they said the testing the testing team at Massive beat the raid in about two and a half hours. Was oh, their wow. best was a, around their best time for the testing team there. I take it you have to commit to the two hours. There's no. I would imagine there's checkpoint. Yes, there are checkpoints. So again, like a conventional raid that you'd be used to in any MMO you go through certain checkpoints and if you wipe for example you go back to the start of that checkpoint and go again Um, but I think it seems heavily communication based there's just without spoiling anything for anyone who hasn't done it yet (laughs) wants to do it um, just from what one piece bit I saw was there's two kind of boss level enemies and you have to damage them down equally at the same time from 100 to 0 and you have a margin of error. If one goes a bit too high, their health starts to recharge. So that's oh, one of the, that, one, yeah, one of the mechanics. Yeah, we have seen that mechanic before. That works quite well. What's the, um, well. What's the prize? Um, so there's raid-exclusive loot. Um, but So none of the ads or just normal enemies drop any loot. It is only the bosses that are going to be dropping loot in the raid. Um, and there is one exotic assault rifle that's raid exclusive as well for all players correct well uh, there's no numbers it's we don't know if it's a guaranteed drop we'll know if 
when mm. people start beating it. Um, I imagine it's not a guaranteed drop. Um, I'm, but it I'm sure probably... they've learned they've learned a lot of this from games like Destiny because it's, some of the mechanics sound very very similar to what we've had in the past. Uh, do you know if Ubisoft are doing any sort of world's first race or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, they've got a, a race for world's first at the moment. Um, so I think it's the first team who completes it will be immortalized in the in-game White House. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, so there'll be a, I think yeah, there'll be a picture up on, on the wall near the clan space with the first successful group and all their game attacks on that's, there. So that's, that's pretty good. That's an excellent. Yeah, I think that's a good yeah, prize. It is. It, what Bungie do is um, for their world's first. There's a comparison, actually, interesting. in this. Two and a half hours for a testing team to beat the raid. The world's first of the Last Wish raid, which was the Forsaken raid that came out in September of last year. Um, it was, um, I think, about 23 hours. Wow. Sure. It took to, to, to come for the first team to complete. And you got an exclusive emblem um, and a jacket, um, like an actual physical jacket, hmm. um, for completing the raid on day one. And the, the world's first all got belts. Do you know, like wrestling belts that you get? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. 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 They all got championship belts and things like that, which was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, if you got it within day one, you got an exclusive emblem. And um, you also got a bit of bit of merch and stuff like that. And I know there was one team that uh, finished in twenty four hours and thirty seven seconds or something like. So they missed out on that kudos by by thirty <sighs> seconds. So, but having um, a team forever immortalised in the main headquarters of the game in the clan space is that's an excellent touch. I think that's really that's cool. cool. Really cool. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I, I'm glad they pushed the raid. It gave them time to balance some things out. I mean, there's still a lot of things wrong with the game in terms of uh, the main thing is build diversity. I think it's what's what's your build? High armor, high damage, just shoot faces. Yeah, Whereas yeah. there's no real viable kind of skill builds or healer builds or tank builds. So I think I think it's something that's coming. They're working yeah. towards that. It must be hard to balance that type of um, that I know for certain because anything that they introduced, I know what happened was people had builds prepared, didn't they? And then they dropped a patch which included nerfs and buffs of certain items, which effectively ruined the builds. Yeah, so, some you know there was some people who built their builds were a certain way that just kind of got tanked from in terms of damage um, and health, but some builds but mine I was very fortunate I got on after the patch and mine actually felt a bit stronger I don't know whether that was psychological or what but mm -hmm. you know I just think it's more how you decided to build mm -hmm. people leaned too far a bit one way and then but you know we've the, the changes that were coming have been public for a few weeks so it's I don't want to say it's your fault but we knew about it so it's not not you know entirely the developers fault although some of the changes were questionable in the first place Right. <clears throat> well, I'm going to be back on hopefully um, the weekend. I'm hoping to get a run of the raid at the weekend, see how it goes. But uh, I've got to balance my time with Destiny because the Destiny raid launches in a couple of weeks as well. So. I thought you said um, it, uh, it was in June, right? That it launched? Yes, yeah, June's in, in a cup. The first of. In June's in a the fourth of June, so the, wow. yeah, the destiny. I want to prepare for that. You see, can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> but yeah, so best of luck to the guys doing the raid tonight. Yeah. Do Get we have through a, it. Can I've we give a name? Call? Call? Can I've we got give a name? On <coughs> um, and it's, it looks pretty good, qualities and all that. And it's good to see that there's. Uh, Eight gamer tags on the side, all saying. Uh, ah, brilliant! Hi, Do you want to, Can cool. you see the? Can you make out the name? It's fine. Just uh, to I can. Uh, uh, one of them's actually name. disappeared. There's only seven here now, but we've got um, Cluzo. Yeah. Um, Baron Bandy. Oh yeah. Um, Hellenic. Sorry, it, it, the name keeps sliding this way. Hellenic Reaper. 
may have said that wrong. Uh, obviously, Tasaki, um, Terrology, Triple Nine, um, Xero, Biggs, and Snowset. All of them are the same name on Discord, except for Zero Biggs, who is Stephen. Oh. Right. <laughs> there, there was one more, but he, he's kept coming up saying disconnected, so I'm guessing he's... Oh, uh, right, right. Let's have a look, see if I can see anything in there. Uh, green, uh, uh, right. Green Pringles was going to join, but uh, I don't think he could make it. Yeah, yeah. Green Pringles. He was in, no, he was in. His name was on the screen. Uh, but it kept coming in and then going disconnected, coming in disconnected. So I can only assume that. Uh, yeah, he's had power issues. So Xander's yeah. going to step up, I think. So that, that's good. At least we get. That was my worry about this. An eight player raid. Missing that's difficult one. to plan for. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard enough sometimes just getting an extra two people to, to, to get on at the same time as what you are on, you know? And, um, get four people was always fine. Because there was always, it was a good number for I thought, because there was always other people who were willing to join, and there was always people who were just there doing their own thing, but would but always would be willing to join up and do some team based stuff. Yeah. Getting yeah. eight people with no matchmaking, Difficult. personally, I think that's yeah. a mistake. Yeah. I would have been happy. I know a, a, a non match made raid gives you a better experience because it requires planning, it requires you all to know each other and things like that. But just trying to get that many players all available at the same time when you're in a diverse group from different parts of the world is tough. Would it be better if it was six? Well, I'm happy with it being eight if you could match make for the remaining. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah, two, three, or four spots or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. And then you you can get maybe two teams, maybe match make with other teams of four. That might have been a good compromise mm -hmm. because it's another team of four are less likely to sort of disband and drop off one at a time. Because yeah. the, the problem being, it's all the other content is scaled based on how many people are in your group. So mm -hmm. if you lose people, it, it has the ability to scale it back down to however many people are left in your group. But this raid is purely scaled for eight people, no less. So right. if you have a couple of disconnects, you're left with six people and no easy way to replace those people. That's probably the raid dead for the night. Well, that's heavy. But, and, and now these guys are playing with seven. Is that a, no, is that a big yeah, problem the, for them? The, 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 yeah. I don't know how, how it, possible it is to do the raid on demand. Uh, w right. without the full the full complement we'll not know that until we yeah sure yeah well, it's, it's in other ways anyway so they don't yeah. know what they're expecting either yeah in, in other yeah. games in other raids that I've played there's always been different ways to glitch or brute force your way through with 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 a, a smaller team we've done and that yes it's always, yeah it's always yeah. been the challenge there's always somebody who wants to be the first person to two man this boss or to solo this part of the encounter just for the kudos and the um, the credit and the, the the fame of doing that you know mm -hmm. but with the division we'll not know until we play it um but that's a good thing about having people who are on standby. The channel's been quite active the last few days with everybody, and um, GPAV's done a good job organising teams in the background and trying to put everybody in touch with each other. So they've had somebody on standby ready to step in. So we should have a, they should have a full a full team of eight back in again. Can you describe the, the what you're watching, Phantom? Where did it look um, like they were at? <laughs> uh, to was, it at like, the, was it in like an arena? Or at the moment, yeah, they're, they're in they're in um, they're in one room. Mm. Um, loads of stuff about, but at the moment they've stopped. I don't know whether they've completed uh, a round or what, but they're right. just all standing in a circle at the moment. Um, looks like they're chucking their gear. Um, right, yeah. So, so I don't the, the, know if they've finished the, around or not. Yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be a mix of combat and puzzles and as, as, as well as different things that they've got to do. <coughs> it, could, it could be that they fa failed around and they're going at it again. I don't know, but obviously I can't tell without sound. Yeah, um, yeah. But they're all, all just gathering up, um, talking to each other at the moment. Um, they were running about fighting. Um, they are still at seven people. 
Oh, they'll be waiting. They'll be waiting for Xander to join. I think. Oh yeah, they could be. Uh... Yeah, Xander's brand new. Just joined the um, community today, tonight actually. Yeah. So we'll, I guess we'll be trying to get the yeah, welcome, and we'll be trying to add him into um, a PlayStation party and then get him in from there. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, probably checking the ho- hope he's at the right gear score. <laughs> they're, they're definitely waiting for yeah. Xander. Um, <laughs> Renzo's just put in the chat of the stream saying Sander as in Shady. I think he thinks Sander and Shady are the same. No, no. no. Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just said to him, no, no, Shady's here with us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, Josh, what time's your game time normally? Um, you it normally depends. get offline when I get online? Really, it depends what kind of mood I'm in. It's usually from around 8 till about half 10, 11. Right, um, but I tend to sometimes I'll adapt that and just start at about half nine, ten, and go through to the, the yeah. wee hour, wee, well, wee hours of the morning. I'm going to see if um, Jpav will see if he can set up a run for the weekend. Um, it'll be a latish one, I'm guessing, because most of the people that I'm on with Shady and Kamikaze and, and the like and the white ball pain uh, don't normally get on till around about eleven, twelve o'clock. In the evening, so yep. we'll see if we can get something like that. But yeah, but this, this weekend I'll do whatever time I'm happy to get a run going. Perfect. Seven. So hopefully we'll have the second half team <laughs> to the raid completion this week. We'll have to find out what the first team's finish time was. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I love any form of competition. I'm definitely yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, what about um, what's next then? We have another update in the community, which is the addition of a new PC category and a very yeah. own dedicated server for Seven Days to Die. Yeah. Phantom, it's all down to you now. So, Tell us about it. I don't know anything about the game. I've never seen it. So Saki's been talking to me recently um, and he keeps badgering on about this game. And he get mentioned about Seven Days to Die. I'm like, I've heard of it. I've just never purchased it. Never thought about buy, uh, playing it. And I'm, I quite like survival games. And he goes, well, funny enough, I happen to have a free copy. So he gave me the copy, and um, we started playing on a local server. Uh, we started streaming it, um, titled uh, Saki teaching Phantom how to play Seven Days to Die. <laughs> It became pretty comical when uh, Saki would uh, take me into a building that was full of zombies that I was unaware of. <laughs> I would run into a room, turn around, and there's one beating me to death. <laughs> <laughs> and Saki's just there with a bow, killing the zombie while I'm getting beaten by the, by the zombie. Um, but obviously we, we decided, um, how about, as, instead of it just being me and Saki, we, we try and invite the hive. Um, so I decided to purchase a dedicated server for PC, um, a little bit like how Shady has the Arc server. Yep. Um, I've got a new one. Well, got a new one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just hope, but basically, anyone who's on PC and wants to play Seven Days can come and join us on the server, have some fun. They don't have to be restricted by um, other servers where they only allow you to do this, only allow you to do that, we can actually open it up and say basically you can do whatever you want, as long as it's not griefing, or we turned off PvP so you can't attack other players, to be honest there's no need for it because you've got the zombies to worry about and um, for those of you who have never played 7 Days to Die um, I now know why it's called 7 Days to Die (laughs) 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 on the 7th day a horde of zombies like loads of them come running at you they're like feral they're crazy and they come running at you and um you've basically got to deal with them um so have you got that time leading up to that to prepare defenses and build uh, weapons and stuff like that yes yeah so you, you've got seven days obviously to build a base um or, or you can um empty one house of zombies and defend that up uh, right. to collect weapons, collect basically everything you can. Um, so what we ended up doing is we've made a house, uh, we've taken over a house, a farm, and then we've built a uh, structure further away that we do the zombie horde fighting mm-hmm. in. 
Um, and let's just say that was uh, that was pretty fun to do. We done day seven last week and day fourteen this week, so it's every seven days. Oh, so you survived the first seven days? Yeah, we've 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 so far survived fourteen days. Oh, just. fantastic! <coughs> you we'll completed to, the game um, twice. Yeah, what you need to do <laughs> is uh, yeah. put together a YouTube clip of uh, each of your seven day your seven day defenses. You know, on the seventh day. Well, yeah, well, awesome. You actually, awesome. If you head over to my YouTube and you head over to Saki's, you actually see a um, uh, each of our pers- uh, perspective of the seventh day, the first four days. Um, we'll have um, to put those in the show notes there, uh, Phantom. Yeah, those uh, oh, yeah. links actually. Yeah, we can do that. Um, we d- Renzo edited the video for me because he really wanted to uh, do that for me, which was lovely of him. And he's can, can can he send it to us so we can put it on the um, yeah 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 I'll send you the link well. for it brilliant um my the one he done for me is very comical um he's made it and then uh, Saki's one is very um, kind of serious right um, but they're both really really good edited video um so yeah um, but if there's anyone who wants to join the PC server for um, Seven Days to Die just head over to the, the text channel. It's pinned um, message off the server details, and if there's any bugs or anything, there's another text channel that you can throw in there and we'll fix. Is it uh, is it is it possible with the uh, uh, with the server to um, buff it or boost it or what, whatever stuff like that? Yes, yeah. Um, at the moment, we're trying to keep it um, as vanilla as possible um, and a lot like a normal just a normal game. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so we can experience it, and then we're throwing some mods in, just a couple mods to like balance the game a bit because it's still in beta. Um, and then we're looking out after a while, we're gonna do a heavily modded server um, and change up the all the stats and stuff of the game. Is it also? We have already. Uh, sorry, uh, is it also possible, like just like um, uh, Arc, you can? Put mods in to um, build different stuff, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I'm looking into that already. Um, awesome. Because in the game, there's loads of things that you can build, but there's very little on the decoration side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I've got a, a decorations mod that I'm trying to install in the server, but because it's in beta um, and it doesn't support things that well. Um, it's, I'm finding it difficult to get this this mod in. Um, it's a mod that you have to install server side and <coughs> client side. Ah, right. Okay. So, I, I might can, I might can help with the server side. We'll we'll see. We'll speak that uh, later. Yeah. Awesome. No, it sounds like a good concept, and it's not crossplay. PC yeah, against PC. Yeah, is the game available on PS4? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it is. Well, was it a PS Plus game recently or not? That's quite a uh, time ago, I guess. Not, not this year. No, no, right. right. I just wondered I might have it. No, I like the sound of it. I it's like a, it's a very good survival game. Very. Good I like survival. I like the genre. I like the zombie genre. It's um, I find it. It's quite like the way Saki explained it to me. It's quite like Minecraft. Um in the fact that it all works in blocks so if you want to dig down you you dig as a block at, at a time be careful with that <laughs> yeah exactly don't dig straight down <laughs> exactly um, but it's designed um so even if you you dig a block down it doesn't look like a block because obviously in real life if you dug down it would all be curved like that and it's designed to look like that but same as if you build you build as a block um, so it's very like Minecraft in that way, um, but a bit more realistic. Now I don't like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to check it out. Check it out. But I'm looking forward to seeing the videos. Actually, I do enjoy watching stuff like that. So it's good that there's still life in the game, though, because I remember yeah. it released at a time that seemed to be a new kind of open world survival game released mm-hmm. in beta mm-hmm. every day. And it's like, which of these are going to try and cut through the noise yep. and actually stay around yeah. and 
arc yeah. and seven days as i see just from you i see things on youtube there's still videos pumping out for both of them so yeah. it's good that oh, they're yeah. still going strong We've and got a and third player that's joined us recently um he's very new to the hive and he's joined us on the oh that's good news. awesome that's good news and i take a dedicated service people would prefer that because you, you have control <coughs> you get in more control of what yeah no um, trolling and, and and stuff like that. I'm guessing, is it? So when when these games come out, they they have public servers, um, and with public servers, there's there's no mods, there's no adjustments to the XP, no adjustments to anything, and you right. get a lot of griefers and trollers that would just come on, break people's bases, do this, do that. Oh, right, right, um, right, right. With a dedicated server, um, generally, obviously, they're linked to like a community like ours and stuff like that. So you can actually talk to the admins and go, oh, can you introduce this? This would be cool, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which makes it a lot more fun. <clears throat> With ours, again, as it being a PvE and not a PvP, there's no really griefing that can happen. Yeah. You can't attack other people's bases. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's cool. It's, it's for a nicer gaming environment, isn't it? Definitely. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Which hopefully, um, so linked into what you said before about dedicated servers, hopefully that this will be an open to the future of us being able to create more dedicated servers yeah. on other games. Yeah, would be I a, like the idea of that. Yeah. I think we should yeah. we should um, maybe look to add in Arc and see if we can do something a little bit with the Arc. Because yeah. Shady used to have your Arc server. For sure, yeah. I've just uh, yeah, renewed it. A trailer recently. A yeah. new one. Yeah, a new one. Right. A, tra <coughs> a trailer for what um, him and Joyce are doing. Like, I can't wait. Oh, me too. And uh, I take it the more people in playing, the better. Is that the way it works? Um, the more fun, or do you like to limit? I don't know how. I don't know. Anything it, about it, 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 it depends on on map size, though. Um, but um, we have a, a, a standard, a basic server. Um, right. And it's it has a, a minimum um, member cap at ten at the moment. Right. Um, but if there's a lot of interest, then we can always look to to make it larger. It's the only <coughs> issue with dedicated servers is obviously money. Yeah. Obviously. Exactly. They're, they're cheap, but when you have quite a few of them and or not enough people playing on them, it builds up money and it's just like, is it worth paying for it? Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Good stuff. Well, now I'd like to um, see more of, of more of that. I'd like to see more PC related stuff. So hopefully, yeah. we, um, we've got quite a few PC members. Just um, I know Renzo is a PC player, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Written now, he's just got his PC built. Mm. Um, and but obviously, very... Neville. I think yeah. I spoke to Neville. He's going to be um, using his PS4 exclusively for multiplayer, like COD and Apex and things like that. And he's going to be doing more um, story or adventure-based games on PC and things like that. Sounds good. <coughs> Clever. It does sound good. We've got a quick um, Gamer Hive, Gamer League update. If While we you're can move on. doing the update to that, I've got to be right back. So I'm going to be here for this next second. We'll hold our breath. <laughs> 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 You just have, with the, uh, the game at home update. We moved on to Apex um, this month, and um, it's been reasonably quiet. So there's still plenty of opportunity for people to grab points. I'm just going to have a look to see what we have because we do have some entries in so far. Um, I've seen a few. Yes, yeah, so there's there's a few challenges. So we've got player game as the as a full high squad, three people. Points available just for doing that. You don't have to win. You just have to play a game. Easy points. Yep. A win will get you six points. A win as a squad, a hive squad, will get you eight points. Um, this is an interesting one. This is one of mine. This is one of um, Jerry uh, Owens. Win as a hive squad um, with collective damage of under 599 will, will net you 10 points. Somebody's already done that, and I think what they must have done, <laughs> I don't know how they've done it, um, because how do you win without getting any kills? That's what I don't understand. I imagine it's you wait for the other teams to kill each other, people die to the zone when it closes in. 
that's that looks like what's happened here because the, the game went on I think 16 minutes um, <laughs> and yeah to, total damage of uh, I'm just having a look now damage dealt zero wow <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> that, that looks look something I could do though yeah that's right yeah. in my street I think yeah, I can say if you can, if you can win a game this. without doing any damage <laughs> I might be good for this battle royale yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the minute we've got um, GQ Guna who's was a regular in the Apex category who's um, bossing it at the minute he's got a couple of entries in and uh, the one and only Mushroom God has even managed to get some points on the board, and he hates these types of games. <laughs> so, so, so good effort to Mushroom for, for making the effort to actually get some points on the board. Awesome. Um, I've made the commitment to, to download the game, so I'll give it a go. I'm going to try to give it a go before the event ends. Um, we'll just see. I'm passing out this one. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. I've yet to, um, I've played it, I think maybe three goes. I've only ever played it with um, Neville or Shady. And I've not yet to get, I've yet to get a kill. So I'm not uh, holding out too much hope, but I'm sh- sure if I can find two people to game with, I can get me two points on the board and that'll do me. Yeah, oh well, you can always try to do nothing and win. Mm, we can try that. Uh, apparently that works. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that sounds good. Let's see, let's see. So we've got we've got upcoming um, a quiz a Gamer Hive Gamer League quiz which will be announced I think um, shortly and that will happen after the Apex event awesome so that's a nice easy way to get some points and I think um, uh, Night of Madness is going to be the one who's going to be done in the glitter jacket oh. and um, hosting the quiz Awesome. So hopefully, Josh, what we used to do, a regular quiz night, actually. Okay, cool. Um, we did that. I actually did the first one. Do you, I don't know if you remember, Shane. Yeah, sure. It was quite a while back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they were infrequent and very occasional, but they always went down quite well. And it's a mixture yeah. of movie trivia, um, <clears throat> anagrams on scramble list, you know what I mean? Things like that and some general knowledge, a bit of music. It's really funny then, to see uh, um, that, that that there are um, very different people join these uh, these quiz nights. Yeah, we had people who only used to appear just for the quiz yeah. and then you'd never hear from them ever. <laughs> exactly. I think people just love a quiz. Yeah. That's why there's so many different quiz shows on television nowadays. Yeah, it's no, people it's love uh, we're going to try to bring that back to a monthly event, I think. Nev's Wonder Woman uh, was kind enough to host them for us, so maybe she we can get her to come out of retirement, or maybe um, Night of Madness will it'll, it'll take up that mantle. Um, if Night runs them, we'll just have to check his, um, check his adding up, just to make sure we're getting all <laughs> of the right points in the right places. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, it'd be good to have something like that to look forward to. Because I enjoy your quiz, you know. I haven't won so many of them in the past. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> right. And um, I just wanted to mention very, very quickly, and he happens to be our featured member um, this month, and I, I apologise if he didn't want this mentioned, but just to pass on our thoughts to Abbas Khan who's from Afghanistan he's a, a long standing member and his dad's very poorly in hospital oh. so we uh, we send him our best wishes actually definitely yeah man but Abbas is actually the featured members uh, a f- featured member for May I'll read I'm not going to read it all it's available on the featured member channel for the <coughs> discord server so feel free to read it and learn a little bit more there's some pictures up there he's a handsome devil isn't he yeah he is Abbas uh, yeah he is uh, his real name's Abbas he's gamer tag is AK Mad Scientist he's from Jalalabad Afghanistan and he's um, he's one of our moderators he started off as a COD only moderator but um Abbas is active in all the channels. He's, he, he does a real good job in uh, making videos for the Gamer Hive, which you can check up out on the YouTube channel. He's made some excellent videos. And um, from what I can remember, he's a pretty skilled Call of Duty player. Yes. 
I don't yeah. know if any of you guys have game with him yet. He's a For he's sure. pretty good player. Yeah. Didn't he do well in the COD? The oh, he came second. Yeah. Game of league, yeah. So yeah, right up. He came second. <laughs> and he only missed out by, I think, one point on getting joined first. So he's, he's done well. He's good. He's, um, yeah, he's good. So we, we certainly wish him well. We hope to see him back in the service soon. Um, let's have a look here. He likes to visit some places, spending time with friends, studying research about new things in his free time. Uh, he's a big fan of football. Um, a bit. I, I seem to remember, is it um, Bayern Munich? Is his team, is that right? Yeah. Or is it Borussia Dortmund? I'm only joking on this. I know. <laughs> um, I will cut it. He looked, he's, <laughs> his favourite athlete being Joshua Kimmich. Um, yeah, he was gonna, he was going to be a a Bayern Munich player, I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm not a huge football fan, so I have no idea. Um, his brother was a person who turned into a gamer. He used to have an Xbox 360, which was great, but switched to PC for a while, and now he's back on the PlayStation 4 Master Race. Yeah. His current games are Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, and FIFA. He did tell me, actually, he used to be a big FIFA player a long time on Xbox. Um, he sometimes even plays Fortnite. His all-time favourite games would be IGI One. Any ideas? Anybody fill me in on that? I don't know. No idea. IGI uh, and FIFA Fourteen. IGI One for being my first ever game. Stuart would have been a game with beautiful graphics and fantastic gameplay at a time when first-person shooter games were not as good as they are now. And FIFA Fourteen because that's where he started playing online FIFA. Now I feel old. My first FIFA game was um, <laughs> the Road to the World Cup, which was, I don't know if it's 96 or 98, I can't remember, but that was my first uh, FIFA game. So 16 years on, I was say, in terms of FIFA. Um, Here you go. Project IGI was a tactical first-person shooter released in December 2000 by IDOS Interactive. That Ados is the um, Tomb Raider developer, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> fantastic. Never heard of IGI. No, uh, me neither. No, uh, me neither. Uh, his favourite gaming memory, this is what I like to read, was last year when he won the biggest FIFA 18 tournament held in the city back in January. It was great because I was the youngest player in the tournament and everyone thought I'd be knocked out in the first stage, but it turned out I won every game of mine on a margin of two to three goals and surprise everyone with these fake skills. Awesome. He plays on a PS4 on a 70-inch 4K TV. 70 Holy inches, shit. people. That's <laughs> a telly. Too big. <laughs> but living in Afghanistan, it's hard enough to find a good internet connection, so streaming is almost impossible. I, I know he has just recently moved to Pakistan, hasn't he? I don't know if it's for yeah. school or something like that. So he's yeah. he's he's enjoying a better internet connection, I think, at the minute. Uh, his dream is to become a doctor and be a successful cardiologist and serve the poor people of Afghanistan and do everything possibly can for his people. He's a very patriotic person. I think that comes across, obviously, in his posts. He loves his country, um, and he's very proud of it. But um, again, Abbas, thank you for taking the time to do that, buddy, and we hope your dad gets over his illness and we see you back in the server very soon. But yeah, take All the best, easy. Abbas. So... <sighs> On that note, because obviously uh, um, Abbas was the recent um, featured member, mm -hmm. uh, there is another featured member yet to come up uh, because we are in a new month. Because he was for April. Yeah. Right. So, uh, J Jitters has J Jitters has one. Oh, does he? Yeah, Ooh. and there was a one. There was another one planned for July as well, but we there still be two a month. So there's still two. All ah, right, yeah. In that case, we can. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll get one out in May. We can try. Yeah. But yeah, we've got two in the bag, so we do want mm -hmm. some more. So anybody wants to share, please um, follow Abbas's example because his profile that he prepared for us is exactly what we want. We want lots of. Hello? Hello? We <laughs> just lost <laughs> Ash? <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, I thought my whole computer froze for a second. Yeah, same here. Quiet. Same here. He's back. Oh, Am I Dash, back? Are you back? Yeah. Yep. You're back. Brilliant. <laughs> where, did I, where, did, where did I get up to? F from yeah, we uh, want, you were talking we're, about Abbas's profile. profile. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, use Abbas as an example. It's perfect. <laughs> That's exactly the type of profile that we want. So anybody wants to send us something, please do so. Yeah. Um, we've got a little bit of general game news. I, I, I've never played any of these. I've played a little bit of Ghost Recon, but we've got um, Rage 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint with a sort of, I guess, with a significant titles that have had a lot of publicity in the past yep. day or two. Does anybody know anything about it? Rage 2 looks unbelievable. It looks good, huh? Yeah. It looks really good. The, but it's, not, not, the, it's, it's, it's Yeah, from what, I, what you said, Shady, it's getting a bit of a roast. <sighs> That's too bad. Um, also, graphics is uh, quite a thing, though. Um, it's it's made for uh, 1080p, and that's it. Um, right. And if you you buff up your system, um, so you have to have a good computer to play. That must be uh, down to the level of detail or the fact that it's it's completely open world. Yeah in every aspect from what I can gather isn't it you can destroy anything do anything <coughs> shoot anything yeah I haven't played it they, uh, um, that's how they advertise it I think yeah um, weird thing is though um, it looks cool uh, it feels cool um, there are very great actions in it but it's all short right. so mm-hmm. um, it's it's built up a small bit and then yeah it's done and that's the whole... Is it a completed game? Uh, is it still in like beta rules? Y- yeah, so you have the main um, quests, as I say. When's it released? Do anybody know when it's released? Uh, no release date at the moment for me, but maybe someone can search it up. Yeah, it did It did look <coughs> good. The con- it, it, like you yeah. say, it, it was, it was Ra- built as yeah, a Rage game where... Is, it's out now. It's out now, right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, fourteenth of May, two days ago. All right. Yeah. Cool. But um, they have uh, some issues, and I'm not sure. Um, well, if it's out now, no doubt we'll be able to check out some streams and some uh, yeah. PlayStation Live footage, things like that we can say for ourselves. I thought yeah. it looked really good. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what for sure? What yeah. I've seen, you know, people saying, and what I've seen, I think tonally it looks great. Yeah. From an action perspective, it looks like it performs quite well and it looks fun. Yeah. Uh, but I guess what I've seen is it it doesn't really add up to anything in terms of plot development mm. and things like that. But I think it was it's made by Avalanche and ID. I think yep. Avalanche did Just Cause and Mad Max mm-hmm. and ID did Doom. So tonally, those games all hit the mark. But story wise, I don't know. No. Yeah. Exactly. We'll, we'll see. I, I think I will, will get it. What I, what I really How like. much is it? How much is it in Holland, uh, Shady? Any ideas? No, not true. I'm um, guessing no. It, it, I wouldn't expect it to be a, like a $60 game or a 50, 50 pound game or anything like that. Surely not if it's got short set pieces. PS4 is uh, 50 euros. 50 euros? Yeah. I'm not going to buy so this. It's like 40, 40 pounds thereabouts, I'm guessing. More or less, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, wait till it's on sale. <laughs> there's more. There's other games I'd rather play. I think. Oh, I'd, I'd look at something like that. Do you know? I've still got God of War. I haven't played that. I've heard it's cool. <laughs> right. I, I really want to play God of War. I've watched the game through in its entirety, and it just looks phenomenal. So yeah. I, I got, really got want ten to out of ten, didn't it? In terms yeah. of a single player. Did it win, did it win Sorry, game? Did it win game of the year? I think it might have. I think it did win game of the year. Yeah. So what about Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Is that a new game in itself, or is that a DLC for Ghost Recon Wildlands? I couldn't work this out. I didn't really do enough research to, to find out what it was Seems about. like it's it's a complete new game, yeah. but more a kind of, se- I guess, a hypothetical sequel to Wildlands. Right. Yeah. Um, I think their statement is that they're trying to do Wildlands again, but make it a lot better, better, basically. So I think fundamentally it's going to be the same game as Wildlands, but it's a completely new Do you know what? I, I like Wildlands. I thought it was quite a good game. Mm-hmm. Wildlands was pretty good, but it didn't. It, it had limited playability. You got bored, I think, after... I'm talking about getting bored and, re- and repeating games. I played Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, um, no, I played Wildlands. I played it a lot. 
got, I didn't finish the campaign <laughs> because I was doing the same routine for every single boss on there. Do you know, because you're taking down a cartel or something like that, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. And I remember I seemed to be doing exactly the same type of thing for every single one. And it did become a little bit one-dimensional for me. But the great point. I like Tom, the Tom Clancy license. I quite like it. The um, graphics looks uh, awesome. Holy yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow. Looks so I never good. played Wildlands. I bought it recently because it was on the PS Store for like £12. So I thought I might as well pick it up and just see what it's like. Did you like it? Twelve pounds. I've yet to play it, oh, right. but it's sitting there. And now the raid's dropped for the <laughs> division, so it's probably going to wait a few days. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bargain. You know, it's definitely worth. Oh, yeah, I think it was only the base game. I think it was like twelve pound ninety nine for the base yeah, game. That's, that's so, absolutely worth it. Anything yeah. like that. Cool. We'll check it out. Yeah, we'll have to check those out um, and see see um, see what goes. And one of the things I wanted to mention, actually, I've skipped ahead a little bit here, was we wanted to talk about some future planned activities and a few suggestions that we've had in terms of the community. And I thought we would, what better place than to discuss them on here with you guys right now. And one was, um, we were looking at introducing new games, new channels and things like that. And there was a little bit of discussion on when we should and when we shouldn't introduce them and how we should introduce them and how we shouldn't. And there was a suggestion made, and this is something we used to do in the early days. We used to have a featured game, but the featured game tended to be one of our supported games and we'd put more focus on that game for that month. But how about uh, we do a featured game for a new game, a community chosen game? that we build something for the support within the Discord server and try to recruit a player base and to see if that, any of that uh, takes traction and try to build something along that. What, do you, what are your guys' thoughts on something like that? Sounds good. Is that, uh, as in a way of um, uh, folding for a game and then the one... And in our horizons. Phantom said yeah. we should be looking outwards as well um, and looking to broaden our horizons a little bit and he's absolutely right mm -hmm. um, but we didn't want to sort no, of build around it's not just me it's Saki as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take all the credit <laughs> I think the common theme is I just think that for most games there's a lot of people out there just looking for a place to call home yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. and if we can yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Get, a, get a new game on our books and then find a few of these people that you know, want a home, well, and then they find our community. And absolutely, yeah. the Discord that we have is a beast from an admin point of view. Um, from a member's point of view, it's pretty clean. They just say what they want to say, and that works really well. Mm -hmm. From from my point of view, you see everything, and it's yeah. just like yeah. it's a lot. It's like a, it's a dog's <laughs> breakfast. That's what it is. But it would be nice to look at actually trying to build some variety in the type of gamers that we have on board and as uh, Phantom and Saki said not just first person shooters and people who play those types of games but maybe look um, look laterally and other try to gems. bring in some other other types of um, yeah. a, a gamer and how we can support those so I thought maybe we could do uh, we could try to pick a game I don't know if it's done in channel or in community or what and um, see what we can do and try to put a little bit of focus on one particular game per month or maybe two games per month. I don't know. I think we start off with one's probably the best. One's better, yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah. Um, if PS5 and the new Xbox bring in cross-platform, hopefully that will make it a lot easier for us. Absolutely, we yeah. For all yeah. platforms. Yeah, or if Discord brought out some categories, again, that would make things a lot easier for a Discord management point of view, certainly. Yeah, subcategories. Um, we've been wanting that forever, um, and it's it would it would solve a lot of the internal problems that we have. Yeah. But uh, any initial thoughts on uh, types of games that we should be looking at from you guys in here? Arcs one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think survival games. Why, you know? yeah, survival yeah. games could Arcs definitely be a thing. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. Good one. It fits nicely with the theme. Survival um, games, adventure games. Yeah, um, we've tried racing games, but that's that's quite hard in some way, I guess. Yeah, the, the, I think the, yeah. the football games and the racing games, um, I don't know why, but the, they've just not had the same level 
They've got Believe a very specific not. crowd, haven't they? A very they specific crowd. Yeah. yeah, and with the games like FIFA, I just, the way I looked at it, I know it's not the case, but I just thought, well, it's just one person playing against one other person. Do you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of like a, a multiplayer game, we eight against eight type of thing. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a bit different, but um, no, we, we're willing to look. So, if the community want to come up with any suggestions, and we can put together a schedule, but, and we can maybe build some content around whatever game we're going to try to feature, whether it's a blog post, a website, a banner, um, um, anything like that, a video, yeah. trailer, anything, we'll we'll try to put something together yeah, and, and get some social media on that as well. Sounds good. Um, and the <clears> other one was. Um, from Andrew Scotsman was uh, suggesting a streamer of the month ah, in terms of yes. trying to build yeah, around our idea. streaming section is have a focused streamer that we try to support on, yeah, on, sounds on, good. on a month. We've, we've talked about this. I like that. Yeah, because it definitely would bring the community together uh, to support well, things. Yeah. Um, I, over the last week or two, me and Saki have been streaming quite a bit, whether it's Seven Days to Die or whatever it is. Mm. And the amount of Hive members I've had pop into chat and just go, hi, just here for a quick hello, how are you type thing. Yeah. And then after about five minutes, they pop a follow and then they disappear. And then another one will come in for about yeah. five minutes. Disappear. And it's so nice to see that pop in and every now and again, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. To, to be honest, the streaming section that we have within our develop a little bit more, but it's trying to find, hopefully there's a gem in the community that might want to step up, send me a message. <laughs> take control of that and and turn it into something that it could be because yeah i'd love to do it myself <laughs> i just don't have the time unfortunately yeah. maybe but social media can help us in this as well yeah it'd be nice oh, yeah. to be able yeah. to um, have somebody i don't know take control organize um events whether it's a sponsored stream or whether it's a we have like a follow train for a, for a couple of days and we try to get everybody to hit their goals you know be a lot of people are just looking for Hitting um, average targets. views yeah 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 hit their targets and yep. that can be done easily you know it, it, it can be done easily i know shady you did yours and i did my own and yep. we got them going um so that's definitely something that um if there's, thing, some, uh, if there's a member in the community that would be interested in setting up to get in touch well, with us. Mm -hmm. One thing we can work on as well, and I introduced this to Shady recently, uh, not Shady, sorry, to Saki recently, because uh, obviously uh, I've been streaming longer than him, but um, there's a platform called MultiTwitch, mm -hmm. yeah. um, where if you put MultiTwitch and then you can put forward slash and then as many streamers as you want after that, that URL, and you can watch them all at the same time. Um, we could do something like that. So say, like, for example, the raid that's going on now, if there's three of our members or four of our members um, streaming it, we could have them all on the same web page, viewing them all at the same time, so you're supporting all four of them at one, not just the one. That sounds good. Um, multi -stream. That could be the, the, the link we, we, yeah, the link we post. So instead of posting just one person's stream, we post the multi-link so everyone can see them all. Yeah, clever. Got a, got a couple of community questions and <coughs> um, we'll try to get through as, as many of these as we can in the time we have left. Yep. Is and um, I'll aim this one at you, Phantom. What got you into gaming? This is from Renzo. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, hi, Renzo. <laughs> <laughs> um, what got me into gaming? I don't, I, I've been gaming since I was a kid, really. Through my dad and my brother. My dad used to play Mario like in jail. Um, my brother would play wrestling um, and same like the same kind of Mario games. Um, grew up playing wrestling with my brother on the PlayStation. Obviously played the Nintendo 64 and all that beforehand. So yeah, just kept with it. Always stayed with console uh, until about five six years ago. I decided to build a PC or buy a PC, then build a PC. Nice. I don't think there was any particular event that got me into gaming. It was just one of those things, you know. That at the time, growing up in in the eighties, there was it was all limited. All games came on cassette. It took ages to load in. Um, and you played that game. There, there was no DLC or anything like that. You just played the game, and that was it. <laughs> 
Um, and you replayed it and you replayed it and you replayed it. I think I suspect the replayability of these games is because it was so bloody difficult yeah. um, in those days. But um, his other question, he says, what do we think will happen with gaming in the future? Whoa. It's a bit broad, Renzo, that question, buddy. Whoa. But um, I guess I my see opinion... Where he's, he's going with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think... Um, <clears throat> it would change a lot. I yeah. think VR is going to be a big play. Nah, I don't believe that. Do I know? think I think VR is a stopgap until we're finally capable of complete AR. That's what I like mean. Like augmented yeah. reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I think VR is going to be a natural stepping stone towards the more augmented reality gaming. Yeah. The ideas are ahead of the technology available VR. Forget the minute. Um, I, I had a Sony VR, and it was really good. Uh, it, it really did exceed my expectations. Um, I've not yet tried it. I really want to. Yeah, it was really, to really it. good. Like, really, really yeah. good. Um, <laughs> much better than I expected it to be. But <coughs> it, I've got tremendous motion sickness of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a common problem. Yeah. 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 And it, I don't know if it was down to the fact that I couldn't wear my glasses whilst I had the VR on. The, the lenses are adjustable, but you can, you can only just both lenses at the same time mm-hmm. which is no good for people most people who wear specs need to have they have different eyesight and di- different yeah. levels of eyesight in each yeah. eye so it's, for me it didn't work and I think that contributed to some of the sickness I've got but it, the sickness was oh, was the worst it was real bad for a few minutes it's okay but after that um, yeah yeah oh, the but, whole world uh, is, uh, but I really was I kind of say this enough I really was impressed <coughs> Um, in the quality of it, it was just so unweirdly and heavy to wear. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think my my personal opinion is the future of gaming is going to be um, get quite a bit into uh, to VR, and then it will be kind of the merge into AR, uh, like like you said. Um, but if we're talking about more present day, I, I generally think that the next. Um, line of consoles is just going to be cross-platform and we just all come together as a proper big community like we should yeah be. more social being divided i think that's yeah. excellent yeah. i think that's an, that's excellent for everybody everybody's a winner yes. even yeah. the console makers are a winner in that because they're going to sell more games and all the rest of it you know that's what fortnite um said to playstation when playstation was like no we're not working with xbox we're not doing that and fortnite was like well everyone's going to buy an xbox to play fortnite with pc players Mm-hmm. Because you won't allow cross platform, and I think and again, it it's, we have Epic to thank because for years we'd had to deal with uh, whoever it was, Sony or Microsoft, saying it's not possible. Yeah. We don't have the technology to do it. Yeah. Then one day, Epic accidentally to flip the switch to allow cross platform, <laughs> and everyone's playing together totally by accident. <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, okay, actually, we can do it, but we don't want to." I was like, "Oh, so clearly the technology's there. So just let us do it." Yeah. And not only that, is that Epic isn't just done that for our community. On PC, they're, they're starting up their own game store, as the Epic Game Store. And a lot of people, a lot of game de- devs, are not going with the usual Steam. They're actually going with Epic um, because of the way Steam works. And it was a nightmare. Yeah, so I get, so forgot to mention it. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is an Epic Game Store exclusive, yeah. Yeah. not available awesome. on Steam. Cool. Which is it's going to be big. I think Epic is doing bits, especially thanks to Fortnite. Epic is doing yeah. I think it all come about just because they don't like that Steam give developers a very very small cut just to be on their platform, and Epic are yeah, giving them more. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a well, it's a pay with your wallet type that. scenario for the developers. Steam also they have these like trading cards that you can earn when you're playing games. And uh, if you collect a whole set of them, you can um, like put them to, you combine them together and you can get like a background and an image that you can put to your Steam account. But you can also sell them through the Steam store. Yeah. Um, most of the time they're only worth like two pence, three pence. Uh, but sometimes you get the odd one worth ten p or twenty p. That, even though it comes from playing that game, the dev doesn't see any of that money or all those Steam. So Steam is making 110% profit. <coughs> do, Whereas the dev is only making like... Do you do that stuff? 
Uh, I collect the cards. I don't sell them for the pennies because, like, again, they're only two, three p. Mm -hmm. You'd have to sell hundreds of them. Um, but I collect them to get the backgrounds um, to make your Steam profile look cooler, mm -hmm. basically. Right. Um, I think the problem <coughs> is that for so long, Steam has been the o o really the only viable place to yeah. buy games. your PC games. Yeah. So, and you can never if you you're only as good as your competition. And if you've got no competition, you're not put in a position where you need to be yeah. mm -hmm. particularly exceptional at what you do. Fair enough. So I guess the, the best thing now is that now Epic have got their own store and they're really ramping it up a bit, putting the pressure on. But a healthy competition for Steam not might see that. some changes. Yeah. Epic is putting a, um, a game that is usually 20 quid um, you'd have to pay for. They're making a game free uh, for every three weeks. It's free for three weeks. It's the same as like the PlayStation does. Um, yeah. They get a game, they put it for free, which is really good. I quite like it. Clever. Steam doesn't have that. Um, they just have a bunch of free games that stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for all. Yeah. Thanks, Good one. Uh, thanks for those questions. J, J Pav's got one. He asks, what do we all think about remastering? Uh, of games um, like uh, you mentioned Spyro and Crash and things like that good idea or people run out of ideas yeah. I think it's people running out of ideas it's similar in the film industry isn't it I, um, I prefer the originals yeah yeah the only remastered one that, that was for me was The Last of Us um, and I, yeah. we, we talked about this on the last podcast that's the that's a clever that piece. That wasn't of, in, mm -hmm. it wasn't an entire remaster though. No. It was it was a clever piece of, of marketing because it came out on PS3, mm -hmm. sold okay. The remastered version came out on PS4, sold even better than it did on PS3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we talked in we last week and said that's probably what they'll do with the Last of Us two because that's gotta be nearing completion. They're oh. gonna release that on PS4 and then remaster it for PS5. The thing is, you get you get some you get some that make sense, like The Last of Us and GTA, both released on the previous gen, GTA Five mm -hmm. and Last of Us, and then they did the new version for the new gen. To say, okay, now these games are going to be even better than they were a year, eighteen months ago. The problem is with remasters for stuff like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. I don't doubt that these developers' hearts are in the right place. That game, though, the remaster is never going to make me feel like it did. No. 15 years ago when I played the original, yeah. no matter how much they're, they want it to. Yeah, it's it, not yeah they're, 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 banging on, they're banking on the sentimental approach that people will take to playing them, isn't it? You know, trying to recapture some moments from days gone by, but I can't say, to be honest, I don't, uh, I don't want to buy a remaster. I'm the only one I've ever bought is Last of Us. I, uh, yeah, I don't agree with remasters at all. No. Like the um, Assassin's Creed are doing a lot of remastered stuff as is, well at the minute, and it's just, I don't see... I think for me, with the the other issue with remastered games is you don't get the nostalgic feeling of it either. No, mm -hmm. no, you don't. No. Yeah. So like, I, I've got classic. I've got Obviously Assassin's Creed. Yeah. I've got Assassin's Creed Three, and I've got the remaster because it came when I it came with the bundle that I got the new Assassin's Creed game in. Yeah. I played the remaster for the best part of an hour Sorry, to two hours, that. and I was kind of just like, yeah. Because Assassin's Creed 3, in the grand scheme of things, didn't come out that long ago. No. And it's kind of like, it doesn't really look much better. It doesn't play much better. No. Is that the um, Native American Austin Tate party? Yeah, era? yeah, yeah. Game, yeah. It was all right, that one, actually. But uh, I wouldn't have thought it was worth re putting the investment into remaster. It. I don't know that it's a remaster anyone asked for. Mm. No, I don't <laughs> No. But um, no, but, uh, thanks for the questions, guys. But la one last one: um, um, is lettuce a fruit? No. no. Is this some kind of philosophical test? No. <laughs> it's a genuine question. What's to the, the best of my knowledge, the definition no. of fruit is something that has seeds. Is it not? Is that the definition of a fruit? Uh, I don't know, but no, nah, I don't but think it's, it's a fruit. Lettuce is definitely not a fruit. No. Vegetable. I've never heard what is anyone it? Is say it a that vegetable? Is a yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a veg. Yeah. yeah, I would consider it a vegetable. It's a plant. 
I yeah. think this needs to be researched for, um, for episode it, six. You know, we need a whole <laughs> podcast dedicated to this. This is the title of the podcast. Minefield. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This is the title of the podcast. This it's way lettuce thing, of it? fruit. It's <laughs> lettuce of fruit. Uh, there's still one more question, and that was from. Uh, I'm going to call him Knight of Madness because I don't like assassins of Madness. Um, and he asked, uh, Marmite, yeah, your name. Oh, it's a near. It's a nay from me. Marmite, have you ever had a chili? Marmite, is it the the, the very dark yeah. brown sticky yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's like vegetable red beef extract. I, I like it on cheese a little bit, but oh, oh no, nah. yeah. it's a name for me. <laughs> Get out of town! Man. <laughs> Tell you what, it's funny though. Is bovril a similar thing? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be exactly the same. Yeah, way. and, and um. What's the Australian version? What do you call that? Vegemite. Vegemite. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's the same wow. sort of thing as Marmite, isn't it? That, it's got to be the same type of horrible glue-like <laughs> substance. Salty. Yeah. yeah, it's not for me. To be honest, Bovril is nice when you make it into a drink. Okay. We never had a, a <laughs> no. Bovril drink. No. I've heard of it. I've never you been brave enough it, to try it. You get a spoon of Bovril and you dissolve it in boiling water, and it's essentially like having a drink of gravy. I was going to say that just sounds like gravy. It is. Yeah. It, <laughs> we used to do we used to do this thing every Christmas. We do the they have them in different parts of the country. The Boxing Day dip, where you go and you run in the in the sea. In my case, it's the North Sea, so it's the coldest of all seas. And on Boxing Day, regardless of whether it's snowing, it's frost, it's ice or anything, and you um, you run up there and then you come out and you have a drink of Bovril to warm up, or, or a nip of whiskey, or whichever you, whichever you're allowed to say. <coughs> it was Bovril or whiskey. That's what we used to do every year. <laughs> and that's the same. That's like this horrible glue stuff, but it turns into a delicious gravy. Meh. Weird. Just drinking but, gravy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might not trust. <laughs> I'm going to have a, a glass of gravy for the next podcast ready. Wow. Let's I'm try and make, get it. I'm as in a shot? I'm going to make, I'm going to get some bovril and I'm going to make a drink of bovril for the next podcast. <laughs> okay. It's probably going to be disgusting. That's the thing, isn't it? That's, uh, <laughs> so are we going to have to admit a warning at the beginning of the podcast saying there might yeah. be throwing up? In. Yeah, it's going to be um, <laughs> scenes of a disturbing nature. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Impressionable good. viewers, please turn away now. <laughs> what about um, a quick one before we, we wrap up, guys? Gaming snacks. Neville did um, a watch oh. party on Facebook for this. What snacks do you tend to, what are your go to snacks when you're gaming? Bear in mind, you've got to consider the, the, the level of grease. Do you know what I mean? Somebody said, uh, I can't remember what, somebody said, like, chips, like, um, fries, you know, French fries. Oh, not a chance. Oh, no, no, not a no. chance. Like, Ooh, too heavy. The, the, the grease transference under the control is just out of question. For me, it's chocolate, and it's it's bad. I, I need to cut down on it. But what do you mean, like a bar? A, honest to goodness, bar of chocolate for your snap segments off? Are you talking about like a Mars bar? Or a... Took about two or three, yeah. No. <laughs> Mm. Literally, I'll go down to the fridge, I'll grab a couple of chocolate bars, come up, shove them here, and just nibble away at them. So, For me, it's um, jellies like uh, jelly babies, um, midget gems, fruit gums, things like that, American hard gums, I like. I like anything like that. I like those as well, but, but um, I'm also in for some nuts. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Sn snigger. Snigger. <laughs> Definitely waiting for, for Jasper to make a joke. Yeah, I was try I was trying my best not even really. <laughs> Shady's Sh 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 into nuts is all I picked yeah. up from that. Uh, nuts, or, <laughs> nuts or chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nuts or chips. <laughs> Are we talking about salted, roasted? Yeah, nuts? yeah, yeah. Pistachio nuts? Mm, good. No, there's too much hassle with the shell. That's the problem. Isn't uh, it? Uh, not pre not, shell, not yes. pre shelled. Okay, pre that's that makes a difference. Mm, not not during gaming though. No, no. What about you, Josh? 
I just think just some crisps, really. I think if you get a bowl of crisps next to you, you just reach over, grab one, carry on with your game. What like yeah. um, what type of crisps? Like what's it? Or Cheetos? Or the stereotypical Doritos, probably for Doritos. gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they Sponsored by. Yeah, it is. It's the orange fingers that you can yeah. get. Yeah, it's yeah. Dorito, That's the same. I have for you console players. That's. Oh, that's not, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Unless you've got mm. control freaks on or something like that, it's gonna look uh... <laughs> <laughs> So is lettuce a fruit and your favourite yeah. greasy gaming snacks? Shady, yeah. what's um Dutch Le- uh, for, is lettuce a fruit? I'm gonna guess, right? This is what the Dutch is yeah. based on the previous Dutch lesson. Yeah, br- bring it on. We've discovered that Dutch is just English <laughs> spoken funnily. Right. No, um, bring it on. Lettuce of fruit is ist lettuce de fruta. No. No. <laughs> not, not even close. <laughs> not even close. Is the best podcast in Dutch is ist the best podcast. Isn't it? <laughs> 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 no, so it's Holden. Is isla a fruit? Isla a fruit. A fruit? <laughs> yeah. Fruit. <laughs> fruit. A fruit. Yeah. That's, a, that's like that's you'd it. Say that if you're from Wolverhampton, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. A fruit. A fruit. Is sla a fruit? Is that a fruit? It's a Midlands accent. <laughs> a fruit. <laughs> oh man. Come on, let's have it once more. Once more, please. Is sla a fruit? It's all in the tongue roll, isn't it? For that one. Tongue roll of the fruit. 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 That's a difficulty. Let's have another one. Anybody get another suggestion? What do you want to learn in Dutch? Potato salad. Aardappel salad. What? Aardappel salad. Aardappel salad. Yeah, with less T with a D. Add up or salada. Salada. Yeah, exactly. Salada. Yeah. Apple. Add apple. Yeah. Add apple salada. What, what, what is what is the literal translation for art apple? Uh, potato. Is it? Yeah. Potato. Only because what's French for potato? For potato is pomme de terre, pomme. isn't it? Pomme de terre. Yeah. yeah. And pomme is apple. Yeah. And de terre is the earth. Apple of the earth. No, art. Art is, is earth. earth. Is it? Yeah. Ah, right. So we'll be fluent in no Earth. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Apple. <laughs> it's Earth easy. Apple. Yeah. Earth apple. Earth apple. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's what I, I wondered because that's French translation. So. Yeah. Exactly. German similar as well, actually, isn't it? For apples. It's uh, a poo. I already. It is. I'm sure it's similar. Uh. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be an expert. I'm going to be able to ask for Apple-based podcasts. <laughs> no. In any language moving forward, that's my aim. You get this uh, this logo though. <laughs> <coughs> Excellent. So, what are we discussing next time? Any ideas? Are we going to keep it a surprise? I think we'll have um, some division talk. I believe. I'm hoping to get um, um, Josh. He might be back. You might Fine by me. That's okay. <laughs> division. No problem. Because when we run this podcast, it's cheap. Have for, uh, for those who, who aren't aware, I'm sure everybody knows, uh, as a young child who's just been born, it's a few weeks old, and I'm pretty sure seven o'clock is normally the bedtime. Yeah. Yep. Sort of people that have kids and stuff like that. So, but we'll see. We'll try. But you, you may be back on. I, we do want to try a six-man podcast before long. Yeah, interesting. We can handle it. I have uh, maybe another uh, suggestion. For what? Joyce is willing to join. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Can, how do we do this? Can we? Is it an upstairs down? Uh, or is it two mics. Good question. I'm not sure yeah. about that. Both of you could sit next to each other. Yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Could be two sets of headphones plugged into your. Thing, then that, 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 be, that that's would be if um, 
Because we miss Joyce in the community. You want to say about games? Does, does it you want Joyce in your uh, man cave? <laughs> oh, it's just my office, so no problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Um, someone was saying to me the other day, um, I can't remember who, I don't know if it was Saki or, or someone in the, one of the uh, managers and um, leaders was saying that they wanted to be in it. It's we 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 are going to have to, and we've talked about this. Do a later a recording of the podcast just to try to get some people from uh, US. Ah, oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of people. So we so we may change. We may have. We may have to do an extra one, perhaps. Yeah. Um, Fine. Yeah, there's, there's no harm doing. Maybe he's having an, and they'll keep to our schedule, but maybe we can do an extra one to accommodate. Do a mini one. Many yeah, yeah, that's good. And we can get a couple of people on. We did one with Jettis though. Later in the evening, that would be good. Yeah. That was cool. Let's make. Let's try to make that happen before the next podcast. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks, guys. Thank and you. Thanks to everybody who's uh, tuned in and listened. Don't forget, you can follow us. And somebody tell me where we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Spotify YouTube, yeah. Twitch, Spotify. Yeah iTunes, just search for the Gamer Hive. Yeah. And we will have links on the gamerhive.com. Also in the description below, so uh, feel free yeah. to uh, check them out. Andrew yeah. Scotsman, if you're listening, we will try to translate <coughs> some timestamps, especially for you. Yep. Or, Andrew Scotsman, if you want, after you listen to it, you can add them yourself. <laughs> Community <laughs> engagement. <laughs> 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 And, um, yeah, I'm going to try to, um, I think from next podcast, we'll actually try to learn some song lyrics in Dutch. For and then we'll let's, look, let's look to perform that song as a foursome. Or what a song, song. That's, that's Wow. Good. That's what we've got to think about. I need Joyce in this. Okay. That's good. It'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll be something simple like who let the dogs out or something, which would be who let this dogs we laat we laat the whole time <laughs> that's what it'll be no but um, um, I'm looking forward to it guys it's been a pleasure and a privilege on a quick note before we end come um, on obviously I've been watching the stream here while we've been uh, oh is this a uh, division raid update so I saw them I'm, I'm going to guess it's halfway through while they're waiting I, I'm guessing what they do is they have a round of where they fight bosses and whatnot. And then they have a, a couple minutes break. They all took yeah. group picture. Oh, trying to trying to trying to figure out where they're going for the next interview. Yeah. Hmm? Um, they all took a group picture of them standing there looking hella sick and cool. So hopefully we'll see that picture soon. Brilliant. Awesome. In the Discord. Awesome. Um, Excellent. It did look really awesome. We will. Me and Josh will work to get that up on the website as well before yeah. the next yeah. podcast. Yes. Green Pringle has joined the stream and he's he's talking in chat and he's been given his advice to them how they should do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant about the raid, isn't it? Backseat yeah. raiding, backseat back raid leading. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice one, Green Pringles. He's a brand new member, isn't he, thank Green Pringles, anyway. So yeah. it's, good, yeah. it's good to see him get good. involved. Right, guys, it's, uh, I think we're knocking on for an hour and 45 minutes here, so now let's, um, mm-hmm. let's call it night. And yes. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. See you, See you later. See you next one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.